So make no mistake, folks, this is an inflection point for Donald Trump. And the whole question that I don't even think I can answer right now, not that I'm any more capable than any of you out there, but the question that I don't think any of us can answer is which way is Donald Trump going to go? Is he going to lean into the MAGA conspiracy theories around this, or is he going to push back and, and look for a more moderate stance? Which direction is Donald Trump going to go? And folks, this is obviously going to have a huge effect on the whole election. And I, I would speculate that Donald Trump is more than likely going to lean into these different conspiracy theories and, and some that we haven't even heard yet. I, I'm thinking that he's going to lean into these and um, and I think for the, the folks that are common sense minded and more moderate, they're going to see this as a negative. As he leans in, I think you're going to see independents push back and say, this is another situation where he took this posture and we think, you know, that's wrong. This is not the man that we want to see as president. But folks, what are the Republicans coming out and saying right now? So you've heard from some of the Democrats, and this is an article that I just have to point out by Jeff Tiedrich. He's on Twitter. Uh, a little on the bombastic side, but he's he's got the pulse of, I think, what's going on here. He's got this article that he just published called, This is Absolutely the Last Effing Thing We Need Right Now. That crazy is about to go off the charts. And to kick it off, he quoted Gabby Giffords, who, as you know, was shot, right, as she was meeting with constituents years ago and still is, is terribly affected by what happened to her. So she came out and said this, political violence is terrifying, I know. I'm holding former President Trump and all those affected by today's indefensible act of violence in my heart. Political violence is un-American and is never acceptable. Never. That's what she said. Jeff goes on to say, as for the Republicans, I wish I could say the same, but they're not. They're acting like a bunch of meth-tweaked monkeys right now, screaming incoherently and flinging their business in all directions. You've got J.D. Vance that came out and said, this is just not some isolated incident. The central premise of the Biden campaign is that President Donald Trump is an authoritarian fascist who must be stopped at all cost. That rhetoric led to President Trump's attempted assassination. Never mind the fact that Donald Trump said, you need to fight like hell on a number of cases. Most notably, just before January 6th and the crowd went down in the Capitol, you got to fight like hell or you're not going to have a country anymore calling immigrants vermin. Uh, the man's really good at whipping up all that sentiment, sentiment, folks. And I don't know how he can say this and not think of that. Because Donald Trump, if nothing else, is really good at whipping up all of this, this hatred and incitement. And then, folks, you've got Mike Collins. Congressman Mike Collins from Georgia, he said Joe Biden sent the orders. And then you've got this kind of thing going on right now with the MAGA cultist, Jeff Tiedrich points out. For a long time, have now been looking for any excuse to haul out their big guns and go on an orgy of what they imagine to be retribution. And all these elected Republicans are only too happy to light their fuses. There's no way that the let's hogtie Joe Biden crowd isn't going to overreact. There's no way. And here's a picture of a guy that's got a pickup truck with all of the flags on it, Trump flags, and in the back he's got a wrap on the tailgate that shows Joe Biden hogtied, laying in the back of his truck. And then you've got people like Richard Grinnell, who want to be in Donald Trump's potential next administration. And he came out and said, Donald Trump literally took a bullet for you. Get registered and vote for this American warrior. It's the least that you can do. And Jeff points out that there's a fun fact about Richard Grinnell. He's been acting as Donnie's shadow secretary of state, flying around the world and cooking up secret deals with right-wing regimes. 
In recent months, he's pitched up in Guatemala where he tried to stymie U.S. State Department pleas for a peaceful transition of power by backing right-wing efforts to block the inauguration of the liberal president-elect Bernardo Arevalo on supposed electoral fraud grounds about a poll previously declared free and fair by international observers. How is it legal for a confessed, classified document thief to have his own guy flying around the world undermining official U.S. foreign policy? So, you know, it's the the whole undermining of the electoral process. It's not just that they're doing it here. They're doing it in Guatemala too, folks. And again, you, you can't undermine and decry one of the pillars, the one fundamental piece of bedrock of our country is democracy. You can't go all over the country and all over the world trying to undermine democracy without getting people upset. And again, and I'm not saying, I do not think any violence should be obviously off the table. There should be no violence, but you have to stop undermining, undermining democracy, not just here, but all over the world. And the Russians are just absolutely so happy about this. The, the one thing that they're probably unhappy about is the fact that the shooter was a registered Republican because they're trying to continually light those fires of division with Americans saying that, you know, the, the Democrats are the reason why this happened. Well, the fact that the guy was a Republican sort of takes some of the air out of that, but they're still trying anyway. And then you've got Senator Mike Lee, folks. He said, we've got to take the political temperature down as evidenced by what happened in Pennsylvania today. Okay, that sounds good. He went on to say, we call on President Biden to immediately order that all federal criminal charges against President Trump be dropped. Not only that, but he wants to ask the governors of New York and Georgia to do the same. Such a gesture would help the heal the wounds allow all Americans to take a deep breath and reflect on how we got here. Our prayers are with the victims of the shooting, President Trump and our country. So do you think that's the right direction is to totally absolve Donald Trump of anything that he's ever done wrong as a way to heal the wounds? I mean, these people continue to be insane. I mean, who else would, would what other American would get this kind of treatment, right? You know, we want to heal the wounds in, in the community or, or a guy that's done something egregious. We want to heal those wounds. Let's just absolve them. I mean, where does that work? It doesn't work anywhere. It's insane. It's literally insane. And this is a senator of the United States Senate that's saying this. And then you've got Speaker Mike Johnson, folks, who who tweeted out, I guess we can still say tweeted, right? even though it's he X'd out, right? That doesn't sound right. He tweeted this out. It's a picture of Donald Trump with the U.S. flag in the background. And Donald Trump is wearing a t-shirt all muscled up with 47 on it. Hashtag unstoppable. Go Mike Johnson. And then you've got this attack that's starting to formulate from the Republican side. They say that it's obviously it's quite a failure of security to not notice someone who apparently had all the time in the world to climb up on the top of a nearby rooftop, Jeff Tiedrich says, raise an AR-15 and take aim at the guy who's been sworn, they've sworn to protect. Well, now they're saying that uh, America's top racists um, have figured out the reason it happened, which is DEI. Okay, so... Now you've got all the Republicans saying it's because of diversity, equity, and inclusion that something like this was allowed to happen. And keep in mind, somebody like Ann Coulter has just came out and said this, fire her, and she's referring to this article from CBS May 2023, in an effort to diversify the agency, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle aims to have 30% female recruits by 2030. Fire her. We can't have 30% female recruits. We can't have a, a 30 to 70% ratio. I mean, God, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? But now all of a sudden, 
they're trying to well up this this whole thing about DEI as is how this could have happened, right? And the fact that Ann Coulter is obviously a female and is pushing back on having just 30% females considered to be in the Secret Service is absolutely insane and off the charts. And then, folks, let's take a look at this. You've got this comparison, I'm sure, that uh, some people have made between what happened to Donald Trump and his attempted assassination and Teddy Roosevelt. On October 14th of 1912, while Roosevelt was campaigning in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, of all places, where Donald Trump is going to be next week, a man named John Schrank attempted to assassinate him. The article says that as Schrank was subdued and held up on his feet, the crowd went into a frenzy. Several of the closest men around Schrank began pummeling him, and others screamed, kill him, hang him, Roosevelt. Seeing what was happening, shouted to the crowd, don't hurt him. Bring him here. I want to see him. The crowd, hearing Roosevelt's voice, looked at Roosevelt, astonished to see him up, standing and talking. A member asked, is he okay? Roosevelt, with a reassuring smile, waved his hat in the air and, and said, I'm all right. I'm all right. In relief, the crowd erupted in cheers, enabling four policemen to gain their way into the crowd and hold Shrank. Roosevelt ordered, bring him to me. Shrank was led to Roosevelt. The two men looked into each other's eyes. Putting his hands on Shrank's head so he could look at him and to determine if he had seen him before, Roosevelt said to Shrank, What did you do it for? Getting no response, he said, Oh, what's the use? Turn him over to the police. As police held Shrank, Roosevelt looked down at him and said, You poor creature. Roosevelt ordered officers take charge of him and see that there is no violence done to him. Gerard and another officer led Shrank away into the hotel as the crowd booted him and applauded for Roosevelt, abiding by his wishes. Roosevelt gave another reassuring tip of the hat to the crowd before he took off in his car. Shrank was led into the kitchen where he was turned over to the local police. Now he later was found guilty and spent the rest of his life in an insane asylum. But in that election, just three weeks or months later, I think it was three months later, Roosevelt lost to Woodrow Wilson, nonetheless. But what an astounding show of character. What an astounding show of character. Contrast that with Trump. Again, fist pumping, folks. Fight, fight, fight. It's always about the fight. But we're at that crossroads, folks, and I think it's going to be interesting, to say the least, to see does Donald Trump lean into the MAGA conspiracies and some that we have obviously not even heard yet that they're cooking up probably today. Is he going to lean into that or is he going to push back and say this is a time for sanity and moderate? It's going to be interesting. Till next time.